I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Hello and welcome to Raw, the Fight Within podcast. This week, an old favourite of mine, Thank you for coming on, Billy Joe Saunders. Anytime, Coogan, for you, mate. Anytime. I mean, it's very interesting, Coog, because I haven't really done anything with anyone apart from you, have I? You're no. the only person I've really done anything with. Is there um, a reason for that, or what? It's just a percentage that I want at the end of the year, sort of thing. What, you know, I'll be happy with 70% of whatever the interview is, you know, do what you, it brings in. Do I you, don't really know how it works, but. Do you take traveller's checks? Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan checks. Sri Lankan checks. No problem. It's in the post, bruv. All right. Um, yeah, I wanted to get you on this because, obviously, we've done interviews for the last, what, 10 years? Yeah. 11 years. Pretty much when you first started pro. So, a little bit of a different one. Uh, you'll get the vibe as we're going on. But I'm going to start you off really easy into this. When you were growing up, when you was a child, what was your first ever memories of boxing? What were they? Funny enough, I was chatting to Nazim Ahmed yesterday on the phone for about an hour. And I was telling him, like, we got into boxing through Naz. Um, I think every 1995 I was in boxing through Nazim Ahmed. And, you know, I remember getting his shorts, getting all his videos. We was getting, you know, same gloves he had, same everything, really. Naz. And, and my brother, obviously, was getting bullied a little bit in school. Um, he was getting bullied a little bit when he was younger, probably about 10 so my dad took him to the gym and I just followed. And that's that's where it went from there, really. That's how we clicked into boxing. Do you remember the first ever fight you went to, like, to watch? The first ever fight I went to to watch was my brother, yeah. Um, I was about, what was I, probably about nine, nine-year-old. Just going to an amateur show, seeing him box and win. And, and then, obviously, it just went on. I turned 11 and I started my own journey. From, like, a, a professional sense... Do you remember the first pro show you went to? The first pro show I went to was, I'm sure it was a George Carmen show years ago. It was like in a little hall somewhere and I went. And then I went to a Frank Warren show. And that's how, like, when I went to a Frank Warren show, I forget what it was now, what show was it? It could have been uh, Joe Kalzaki come to our local gym and he was defending his title somewhere, boxing someone. And he trained in Chesham Boxing Club. And I remember watching him on the bag and we, we, we went to watch him. It was unbelievable. I forgot what night it was to be fair now. But for every like boxing fan as such, obviously it's a bit different for you, but every boxing fan there's always one fighter that kind of got into got them watching boxing, let alone you being a fighter. But I always say the same for me. Nazim Hamid was the one that actually got me watching boxing before anyone else. So was that the same for you in yeah. that way? Yeah. Nazim Ahmed and Joe Kalzaki, Manny Pacquiao are my favourite fighters. Like when Naz went, my eyes were on Joe Kalzaki, you know. So and Pacquiao. So I suppose because they're both southpaws, I enjoyed watching their style and picking up what I could, when I could. But this is an interesting one for you. Do you ever think that if you hadn't got into boxing, genuinely, what you'd be doing now? Coogan, if it wasn't for boxing, I. Sp- I know a lot of people say this, you know, with with a full stop, but if it wasn't for boxing and, and our boxing come into my life and led me on a path of, you know, clean living, clean eating, you know, discipline, respect, fight respect, then I'd probably be in prison, I'd say, because boxing, for me, has, has made a big difference in my life. Good and bad, like, don't be wrong, it's not all... People look and think, oh, I'd love to be a professional boxer at that level. You're boxing in the ring, you know, you're earning loads of money, you're doing whatever, but it's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, it can get very lonely, stressful, depressing at times, I suppose. But when you know one way, and that's all you know, it's one way in, well, there's no turning back, is there? So you'd be convinced from a lifestyle point of view... It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't have been good for you? No, it wouldn't be good, you know, because... I suppose, obviously, without boxing, it's, you know, it's kept me out of the clubs, the pubs, everything else. Um, 
I'm not really a, I'm not really a drinker thanks to boxing. I've never took a drug in my life thanks to boxing. You know, it's boxing has done so much for me. Do you ever think about what say let's assume that you weren't in prison or you didn't go to prison. Do you, what do you think your profession would be? What Swiss think? Swiss banker. Swiss banker. Yeah. You said that without battering an eyelid. Swiss banker. I'll be a Swiss banker all day long, every day. Just sat there, boom, 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 suit on me, sitting there just cashing in. Yeah? Yeah. Is that a genuine answer? Yeah, genuine answer. Okay. One ambulance, driver one or the two. Okay. This ain't good. I would like to have been something helpful. How is a Swiss banker going to be helpful? Helpful to you, you maybe. I can give you a loan. You, oh, you know, I suppose, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You come to me, Coog, look, Billy Joe, look, this is what it is. I haven't got good credit because, you know, I've done some bad things. Coog, don't worry, you're a mate. Bam, stamp. Go on. So you're helping Take people in that way? Of course. Okay. Or a driver in some capacity? Ambulance driver, maybe. Because I'm a very good driver to get someone to the hospital sharp. Yeah, to be fair, I'm going to echo that because I've been in a car view many a times over the years. Mm. And uh, it's uh, an interesting experience. Very, very interesting. Pretty much like when I tied my own shoelaces for the first time. Listen, it's like a glove. I'm just, I was born to do it. Do you know when you was a kid? Do you remember the first ever fight you got into? Like n nothing to do with <coughs> when I was when I was a kid, my brother used to get bullied, and. My mum, I remember years ago, my brother used to get bullied and, and she was she was so frustrated, non-stop, like, frustrated at him for not even hitting back. We used to live in Basildon, Oak Lane. I forgot who it was now. And then my mum, I remember standing outside the gate and my mum walking to a, a boy, on like, a bit older than my brother, so he would have probably been three, four year older than me, and went, I'm, I'll give you a fiver if you go in there and rip my son out and beat him up bizarre isn't it yeah. this is about my older brother because yeah. he wouldn't hit back and I remember I was real real young very young it's probably seven and I remember just going and grabbing a big do you remember do you know like the big long light bulbs what the big long lights what click in they're like tube lights uh, like fluorescent tube lights. yeah yeah like yeah. the big tube lights and I remember just seeing one and I remember my mum talking to this fellow like I can still picture it now and I can remember it and I'm thinking he's gonna hit my brother so I went and got one of these big tube lights and I just swung and hit him at the back of the neck of it and he took off running crying. But I was thinking, like, you're not going to hit me brother. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It wasn't going to happen. So your brother was that way, kind of... My brother was very, very, very in his shell. Hmm. Very in his shell. I was always, you know, walking up to people, probably asking them for sweets or a pound or something. Do you know what I mean? I was one of them. But he was more laid back in his shell, like, very quiet, not put himself out there but I was just always in trouble bits and bobs as a kid so that was that's my first memory of literally having a dust up yeah with a light tube. with a light tube yeah but yeah. I had no other option to be honest it was like I was at, at that see as a kid you don't realise oh it's just they're going to go and have a little kids fight you think the worst probably as a little kid do you know what I'm saying do you yeah like when like let's just say you tell your little daughter off well, like when she understands yeah She's going to be thinking, like, I'm in big, big trouble. Yeah, yeah, well, realistically, yeah. it's not. But I'm thinking, my brother's in big, big trouble. Yeah, yeah, I get that. You know? Yeah, I get that. And I remember picking up on that. That's all I thought. He's in big trouble. He's going to... Because he didn't really... Uh, he didn't... Do, he wouldn't come out and defend himself. So what am I going to do? Let someone go there and let him see him curl up in the ball and start beating him up, man. Because in, in the gypsy community, Coog, you know, you've been around it, like, there's a lot... Like, kids get brought up a lot before their age. Yes. A lot before their age. And, you know, all these little kids running around, five, six, seven, that's all they've been taught to do is fight. So if you don't fight back or you don't do something back, you're going to lead a very sad and lonely and, 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 and a shelled life away from the rest of the community. Do you not think that's a bit of a... I don't know what the word is, but I understand what you're saying. You're basically... You're teaching kids to defend themselves more so as well because if everyone's kind of that way inclined, then you don't want your kids to be in a situation which they can't handle themselves. But do you not think there's a bit of a shame to that? that... <clears throat> there is, Coogan, but I bring my sons up. I'm bringing my sons up to to respect their eldest 
that do not take no messing from nobody. Someone comes to you and you think you're in trouble, deal with it first and think about it later. And when I say that, I'm saying deal with it first. Like if someone wants to jump out and have a fight, jump out and have a fight. Because at the minute in this culture now, <clears throat> in every culture, shall I say, we've seen a big rise of, of people dying and getting killed and stuff like that. In the gypsy community, they're pretty normally good of jumping out, settling their differences there and then. Yeah, That's one thing I can say. You know, there's good and bad in everybody, and not everybody sells it like that. But, you know, a lot of people this day and age will get out and save all the violence and arguments and ongoing feuds and stuff and have a fight, shake hands, and be bygones. So, in your, just to carry, carry on from what you're saying there, when these situations happen, how many times out of ten would you say that that straightener or that fight they have ends? That? Well, look, it, it, I, I'd say, look, let's face it. This day and age, you've got corruption, you've got drink, drugs, parties, nightclubs, you name it, it's there. So, as long as you can learn to maintain yourself and be in charge of yourself and be in charge of your thoughts and awarenesses at the same time, if you are in that environment, you're okay. But don't go in there and, you know, look for trouble, start trouble. And look, sometimes nobody don't look for trouble in this life. Some look, we've seen loads of things. That poor girl in, in Liverpool just sitting there having a beer and, you know, dead the next minute. That's just, life's a very, very fucked up and weird sort of, weird sort of uh, way of working out. But as long as you're a good person, you've got a good art, you mean good from your art, I believe that you'll always do okay. So my boys are very, very, they're not brazen, they're not cheeky. They're, you know, if they're sitting there and their oldest is there, they get up, they let them sit down. Like they've, they've got good morals. I'm not saying they're angels because they're far from angels, but moral, moral respect, I've implanted that in them very early. Talk to me about a time in your life where you thought that you were fighting a losing battle, whenever that was. It doesn't have to be relating to boxing. Coogan, do you know what? A lot of I'm not the one to sit on on sort of camera and talk about depression and talk about, you know, oh, I've had it bad and, you know, I've gone through this. Mate, listen, grow up. Yeah, don't me I go through bad... I go, I've been through very bad stages in my life that nobody knows. My mum, my dad, my personal close family, nobody knows. Except for me, and that is it. it I don't go and tell people my problems and, and look for sympathy. I won't do that. I'm one of these people that if I had... If I was given to next week to live, you wouldn't even know about it now, having a talk. I keep myself to myself, and I deal with my problems personally myself in my own way. And the way I deal with them is it's a lot mentally. You know, when someone gets mentally ill, they look for someone to, a shoulder to cry on, you know, to let it out. We're men. You know, we're here to, to, we're here to provide for our children. We're here to do everything we can now. It's an everyday job. It's not... You know, a free three day a week job where you can be a good dad and provide, and you know you can have four days off, because it doesn't work like that. The way I deal with, you know, I've been through many, many times, and, and probably, you know, a couple deep down where you think, do you know what, I can't see no light in the tunnel, but there's always light because you just got to look at your children and think, do you know what, regardless of what goes on in my brain, regardless of anything. I need to get out and do this or do this or do that because they need feeding, they need clothes, they need attention, they need they need a roof over their head, they got the mums got to have cars to drive like I've got responsibilities that I can't just sit back and dwell on and roll my eyes because I remember when I didn't have two pence to rub together. I remember the times when I was sitting at the bottom of, of the site in Atfield when I was going out to work thinking, right, which way do I go today? Which way do I turn? So looking back from there if I was in that position with my kids now, I'd be in a terrible place. But I'm thank, thank you know, thank God I've done okay. They're all, they're all okay, and that gives me great satisfaction because if I died tomorrow, or anything happened to me tomorrow, everything I've got is for my kids, and not no one in the world can go and say he done a bad job. They'll all have to say, well, fair play, he done a fucking good job. Like, I don't, I'm not one of these cool to blurt out about, you know. Uh, success and stuff like that good good things speak for themselves. and you know i've had 31 pro fights 30 wins i've been very successful in my life you know but you just got there's a stage i would give advice to people when they are going through 
you know, mental depression. And I've had messages before where people talk about it and I'll give them messages back. But you need to find the in-between because they are of a very super high rate maximum to the sky or they're low to the floor when you get when you find a level of in between them you can have a little bit of normality in your life but finding that in between is very difficult and i can understand why people book themselves into rehab when they've got drug addictions drink addictions gambling addictions you know it's 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 not an easy life we live in but it's the devil's world it says that in the bible do you, do you accept though that you're all right, your, that's your mentality and that's how you've been brought up and that's your mindset. But you accept that that doesn't work for everyone. Some people need to be able to talk to people and that gives them a sense of... Talking talking to people, I find it very hard. Some people's different, like you say. Some people can talk to people about their problems. Some people is Some people need to get it off their chest. And that's good. But... Them people, Coogan, can't, what you need to get in your head and realise to move and elevate forward is that these people aren't going to be around 24-7, seven, seven days a week. No, I agree with that. I do agree with that. So when you get too used to talking to these people, psychiatrists, whoever, do they, you're sitting down, you're telling me you're going to go and meet somebody. Like I'm just talking about in the real world now, Coogan. This is the way I think. And people can sit and say, well, you know, he's talking shit or talking real bad. You're telling me... I'm going to meet a strange person who, you know, is probably getting paid good money to do it. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to tell him my problems and they're going to fix them. So, talking, you can talk to yourself. It's not a problem. Sit and have a conversation to yourself. Right, I need to pull myself out of this. You've got a crack on. You need to, listen, liven yourself up. Fucking look what you've got around you for a minute. You've got your kids, you've got this, you've got that. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Crack on and get on with it. It's hard. You have to keep the train moving. Because when you stop, when you get in that position where you stop, trying to pull that train again on them tracks is very, very difficult. You just have to keep going. Whether it's, look, you're feeling shit, go and have a walk. Breathe, fresh air. Go in, I don't know, go and stroke your dog. Have a little conversation with someone on the phone. Ring up. You know, you can... There's always avenues to go down. You don't have to just book yourself in all these people making big deals about it. I understand some people's got it more severe than others, but I think a bit of a bit of mental illness can creep in on people. What that you know, what they don't realise as well. So people deal with their stresses different. I'm not saying my way of dealing with it is the only way and the best way. It just works for me. Yeah, I get that. It just works for me. It might not work for you, but the way I think and the the way I need to keep myself active, because people can can go insane and and when. The biggest killer at the minute for me is, you know, you see people on social media and they, they're living the perfect life. They're putting pictures up in the perfect moments and they're living their best life. Realistically, they're not. You know, they're not. People, people sometimes does stuff to cover stuff up, to, you know, to put their self away from the society if they don't want to be around people. Like, people... People use social media now as like a, an escape goat, shall I say, because on Instagram, I've got, I don't know, I've got half a million followers, but if I was to let anything on the internet get to me to add to my problems, that's like letting 500,000 people in my living room. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, myself personally, social media is there to keep us zoned in, to keep us putting stuff up, what we're doing. They're forgetting about their normal life. You go to a restaurant now, I'm bad for it. Be out, phone out, everyone's got their phones out looking. Yeah. Where's the days of having a chat, having a conversation? Lean over to the next table, you know, how are you doing? Are you doing all right? Like, why not do that? Why have you got to sit there for, you know, two hours? You're going for a meal for two hours. An hour of that, you're on your phone, probably more. Yeah, I agree with that. That's just my opinion on that. No, and I that's think... the way I deal with things. No, I yeah. have to move forward. I think you make, a, you make good points about quite a lot in what you say there. I do think, like you said, everyone's different and has to deal with what suits them. That suits you, so that works for you. Someone might listen to that and have that mentality, which is fine. But for a lot of other people, it's like you have to deal with them situations how it suits Yeah, but what, what I'm also saying is, if you can't, if you're not one of them people that can deal with stuff like that, and you always got to think the best coup. Like, I don't know, you could have lost... A pair, you could have lost a parent last week, but 
you didn't. He's alive. You've got to take that as a positive. So you might be down about something, but remember the real things in life. You've got to find the real... F well, my dad could have died last week, but he's not. He's alive. That's more than anything to me. Yeah. That should make me happy. Like, you've got to think of the positives. And some people need that help. Some people do need to go in and talk to people professionally and let their problems out and, and talk in different ways. Because the society we, we live in today, you know, we can't even have freedom of speech. You can't you know, say anything. You can't say anything. There, there can't be any controversy now in this world. It's just the way it's run. It's just the way it's going. And it never changes. It just gets worse and worse and worse. So you have to stand on your own two feet and think, right, I have to do this myself. You know, I'm not going to let someone else... I'm not going to go and sit down with a stranger and they're going to tell me my problems and they're going to tell me how to deal with it. They probably tell 50 people the same way. I work my own problems out. I do my own thing. I've got good people around me. And listen, of course, like, I get down, people get down, depressed, and you go into moods where you don't even want to go out the door. But sadly, I've got, listen, I, I've, I've got things to do, I've got things to run, I've got to make sure that I'm on top of them because I've built that myself, nobody else. And nobody ain't going to take care of that like me. So what do I do? Get down and depressed and sit down and lurk around. And I've been off the scene of boxing because I've been very busy. You know, I've been... I've been doing my, my I'm not all, I'm not just into boxing. I like doing a bit of property, a bit of stuff like just to keep my mind going. You know, even I don't really do a lot if I'm honest. Like myself, shoveling and this and that. I may help out here and there. And do you know what I'm saying? But just to keep the brain moving, keep the water flowing. You know, it's, I'm good with that. You've been not boxing now for two years. Coming up to a year. Coming yeah, up mate. two years in May. So for you, when you get up in the morning, what are the everyday battles of Billy Joe Saunders? Whether what what are your battles every day? Cool. I can <clears throat> I can sit here and say to you, and I probably wouldn't sit here and tell people my battles, but I get my own battles every day, every single day, about a mixture of stuff really. You know, I get I get my own battles about my own personal pro problems I have and. You know, I don't share them and, and talk open about them and, and to get them off my chest because I feel that a lot of people love this day and age to hear people having problems. They love to hear it, but... I agree with that. I oh, agree with that. I think it sometimes it makes them feel better about their life. Yeah, about their life and their problems, but what they need to realise It's not is, always done horribly. I just think people in their heads, I do agree to a certain Well, look, let's just say you was doing an interview now and we were having a conversation, we're talking about boxing. And we uploaded the same interviews <clears throat> on the same day. We'd done an interview about boxing. And then we'd done an interview about, I don't know, let's just say, I've done something bad and I'm in trouble. You put them both interviews out. The one where I've done something bad and I'm in trouble is going to get four or five times more views than let's talk about earning money and let's talk about this big fight, that big... No uh, one gives 100%, 100%. a shit. For me now, boxing is becoming a circus in a way where, look, I would love to go to Arsenal Football Ground, talk to Arteta and say, do you know what? I am one good striker. One good striker. Give me three million quid and let me play a couple of free games for you. You know, let all the cameras be around that. And let... You wouldn't have that in football because it's run so professionally. But at the moment, the promoters are against each other and they're trying to find the, the solution for the biggest shows and the biggest sales. And sadly, they are YouTubers because of the audience they've got is probably from 5 to, I don't know, what, 25, let's just say, average yeah, audience, yeah. you know, but, you know, and they've got millions of views, getting back to, like, these YouTubers now coming in the game, it's making a, a, a you know, a, a shambles of the sport, really. I just think that when these promoters are in, and they're just, it's just becoming a big circus, and it needs to just cool it a little bit. You know, look, Jake Paul going to get a WBC rating, Ranking if he beats uh, Tommy Fury. Where, where's that come from? What, who's doing that? That's clearly money. And in boxing, I've had troubles where I've been fined. I've had hundreds of thousands took off me through fines. I've had people fight in my corner in the same scenario of other people. But the outcome's never the same for me. Because I'm too straight and too open. I'll get straight to the bush. Like I can't hold my temper. I just tell dead how it is and that is it. And anybody who's ever worked with me will tell you I'm very straight. Good, bad or ugly. When it comes to it, I'm very straight and very honest. And Frank Warren, Eddie Earn, they both work personally closely with me. To be fair, 
You know, they both know me very well. And they've both been good, really, in ways. I know I'll slag Eddie off and give him this stick and that stick, and maybe Frank, you know, over the years, here and there. But they've never done really anything bad for me. They've made me what I am today. You know, I'm, I'm not a greedy person. I can, you know, shake around and say thank you very much. Continue as, you know, as normal. But you get some people who's absolutely idiots. Everybody wants to take over, you know, the game. Everybody wants to be this big who I am, but really nobody wants to put the work in, Coop. Nobody wants to make the fights. Nobody wants to make the investment. So, you know, it's one of them at the minute. Boxing, just getting back to the scenario you took me off what we were talking about. Boxing at the minute is it's run poorly, and, and that's affecting a lot of people to be bothered to even get back in the game. Because... You know, talking about the WBC ranking, is Tommy going to get a world ranking if he wins? Or is it just Jake Paul? My understanding is it's either war of them. Well, that might be wrong. I don't know, actually. I know a lot Well, it's not fair it. if Tommy's not going to get it. No, but I think is. it is both of them. Don't quote me on it, but I think it is both of them. Um, by the time this podcast goes out, that fight would have already happened if people are obviously wondering why we're talking about that. But to my understanding, it was but either or of them a top 40 ranking within the WBC. So, we'll see. We'll see what they say. I don't know. I've known you for so long, and obviously I've known your family for 25 years, obviously before I knew you. I don't know how much of an emotional person you are. When's the last time you had to fight back tears? Are you emotional at all? People, everybody's emotional, Coogan. Everybody's Everybody gets emotions. When people say, oh, no, I'm not emotional, I don't do this, I don't do that, we're only human. Everybody's emotional. People deal with it in a different way. Um, you know, some people got their ways of dealing with things in ways, and some people's got completely opposite how they deal with things. And I'm one of them. I take day by day. I don't look at, I never look at, like, I'm feeling good today. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. What takes most of my stress away? Do you know what it is? Horses. Horses take most of my stress away. Do you know when I'm real stressed, real down? Just get out, get my horses out, have a look at them, harness them up, drive them, because I race them. Like, I'm, I like getting them fit, getting them ready. I sort of train my horses how I train myself. It's good, I enjoy it. That calms you down, relaxes it calms you? Me, it takes me away from every problem i got. Personal life, you know, I'm not gonna, no one's, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, no, I'm not emotional, I've never cried. Like, people do things in their own time that, you know, they need to do and to get it out how they need to get it out. But... I'll ask you one question for the people who's listening. How long have you known me? 12 years. 12 years? No, 2010, 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. Right, and to be fair, I will say, like, since I've known you, it's always been very close and personal. We'll have a chat, we're phone. Sometimes not even about boxing, correct? No, a lot of the time it ain't about boxing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. To yeah. be fair, probably our conversations, uh, what people see on, on camera is about boxing, but what we chat about 90% about... If we're going to have a talk about boxing on our private call, it's who do you reckon to win? What do you reckon? Correct. And you still never give an answer, yeah, on that, by the way, anyway. But it's you've never known me to ring you with a personal problem. Have you ever known a personal problem that I have, apart from anything to do with boxing? Take myself away from boxing completely. Have you ever seen a personal problem where I've sat and chatted to you and said, Kirk, I've got this problem, you know? No, never. If there's anything, I've rung you over the years. Yes. And we've had conversations. Yes. About, I might have had women problems. or we've had, yeah, Life, yeah, yeah course, life. course. Just, yeah. I, I've had them with you. Yeah, course. But you've not had them with me. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So your point, <laughs> yeah. Your point is basically, yeah, I don't, you I don't, don't talk about things like that. I don't like talk that. about things no. like that. And, and to be fair, I've got a lot of my family members, I don't know what it is, if it's in the blood or if it's not, but most of them is very, they lock up inside. And that's the way... I've seen people deal with things and I suppose I've just learnt. To, to be fair, my childhood, as a child, my dad gave us the bestest childhood he possibly could. And when I say the bestest childhood, I don't mean going to the shop, getting toys, getting this, getting that, getting everything. He taught us the facts of life. He taught me how to present yourself in a way of, you know, he taught me probably a bit better than I act sometimes. Yeah, but regardless... We've, been, we've had, you know, strong morals put in us as, as young kids. If we want something, we've got to go out and earn for it. We, we never had anything given to us, and that's all of my... That's my brother and my sister. We've never had, you know, an open hand and say, there you go, son. If you have a tenner off me, don't you give it back. No problem. You know, but my dad, to me, has put everything in me. What I am today, if it wasn't for my dad, 
I wouldn't be no world champion. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have had these many fights. I wouldn't have been who I am today. Definitely, hundred percent not. Where does your fight spirit come from? I don't mean. In I do everything. Of... I, I I get in the ring. I give up boxing before I box you, bank The first time. I give it up. Packed it in. Couldn't be fucked with it. And I remember going to my dad's, sitting down. I sat in his front room, and we, I didn't even expect it. Do you know when you need? I done. Everybody needs that talk from somebody where you think fuck. Like, there's always somebody in somebody's life where you you don't want them to know this, you don't want them to know that, because you don't want to worry them, probably. Yeah. But, however, when I sat down with my dad, and I said, you know what, fuck the boxing dad, like, fucking this and that, he went, yeah, he went, very clever move, what are you doing there, he said. Look at the size of you, and then he really, like, give me a grill in, yeah? And I, w I have never answered my dad back in my life, and I would never do it. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, "Oh fuck you" or something like this. Like I would never do it. So I'm listening to him, and then he went, "Do you know what? Fuck off." He went, "Go and get out." And I thought, "I'm like, oh. so." I just went out, and do you know what? When I left his place that day, something just switched in me, and I thought, "Do you know what? I'm going to show him." I thought, and I was thinking that prick. I was thinking to my own self. Yeah, I was, I was calling him every name in my head. Yeah, because he told me the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts, and sometimes people need them grillings for them. Certain people, I could sit here and grill you, and do you know when you leave it, it wouldn't even enter your brain. But probably your mum, your dad, someone along them sort of yeah. circle, you've got that respect for. When they do it, it's like a something left inside you where it plays on your brain all day. The next day, I thought, do you know what? I am a fat cunt. Oh, what am I even doing? And do you know what? I thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to win the British title, I'm going to give it to him, and then I'm going to fuck it off. So I boxed you, bank, retiring after. When I won the title, I went, hey, Dad, that's yours. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, Keep that. You have that now in the trophy cabinet. And then Frank Warren's very good at what he does, isn't he? He was like, right, got this for you. And got that for you and a few quid. Like, and then my ears are pricked and then I'm back in the game. It's just you have to have someone in your life like that. And some people hasn't got them people. Some people hasn't got them people, but you have to learn to walk yourself. Regardless of someone can... You have to learn to walk yourself. You have to learn to sort your problems yourself. That's just the life we live in. And it may sound harsh to people, and people may listen to this interview and go, do you know what? His fucking way of doing it is fucking silly and stupid. Fuck that, I couldn't do that. Or oh, oh, that ain't me. No problem. But it's me. I sort my own problems. I figure stuff out myself. You know, it's, I like to be... I like to be on, on my brain sometimes. I like to be on myself. That day you are talking about that, you went into your dad to say that you were what you were going to do. You wasn't... I think in your head you're saying you're telling him what you're doing, but really in the back of your head you were waiting for his response to come. You didn't ask him anything, did you? No, you but didn't say, Dad, shall I do this? No, no, no. What I did do is this: I only went up there for like a cup of tea or coffee or so. Yeah, I just but I was in the, in my brain, cooking. And if I make my mind up, and Sank's in my head, and that's in my head. If I like someone or I don't like someone, once my mind's made up, it's made up. No one's ever going to change my mind. Mm. People can talk to me and tell me the good, tell me the bad. My own mind is my own mind. And I live and trust off my own instincts and, and that's how I get by in life. And if I don't like someone or, or I like someone or anything at all, that is it. And when I went in there, I didn't even... My mind was made up thinking, do you know what? Probably thought I was, you know, bigger I am because I probably had 60 or 70 or 80 grand. Around. I don't know, yeah. And I thought, you know, I'm done now. Yeah, I sat back, I chill and got lazy. And then I just got the... I got the old the old baton one, bam. No, like the word, verbally. like. But he, he didn't... Tell me, it wasn't like you fucking this. You, it wasn't that. It was like a calm. I was listening. And I was thinking, like he talked so calmly, and what he said, I thought. Well, as soon as he said it, I thought I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have said this. I was thinking. He yeah, knew why what he was doing. Oh, of course. Yeah. Listen, listen. He's my dad. My dad knows the way I think. My dad knows me very, very well. My dad knows me. You know, my dad knows me, and like he knows what to say and how to push and what not and when to leave me alone. Me and him, listen, what you're forgetting, I've been boxing since I've been five. I've been doing this and talking with my dad since I've been five-year-old about this game. And then for me to go and just win the British title, or fighting for the British, like defend it one more time, and it was mine, and for me to go and sit to him and go, do you know what, Dad? Nah, that's me done. It's very selfish, because my brother done that, and my brother was probably better than me. But we, my dad... He was better than me. Yeah, he was better than me. Yeah, let's have it right. Yeah, four school boys, NABCs. Well, that's what yeah, he was better than me, yeah. But... 
with with my dad, like I see my brother do that, and my dad will leave work, and I mean he'll be financially not very secure, and then he'll leave jobs and take us away, and I thought, do you know what? So everything I do in boxing is for my dad, not even for me, to be fair. I don't give a shit. Obviously, the money's nice when you're fighting, but everything I do, I don't do anything for stature, like statutory improvement. I do it to look at my dad and go, bam, like, got it, done it. like, And that's the way I roll with that game. Would you say that you've had to fight demons in your life? Yes, I have. Uh, listen, everybody fights demons, Coogan. You're are you, probably, you're are you still fighting them now? Yeah, I fight demons now, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't. My life's not perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm probably not where I need to be mentally anyway at the minute. Like I need to, you know, I'm, 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 too, I'm, I'm myself, but I'm not myself, if it makes sense. Like, myself is 13 stone, in shape, fighting fit, giving people stick and ready to rock and roll. Like, that's me. Who you're talking to now is really not me, like, in a way of who I, who I want to be. And sometimes when you miss boxing, you don't really know what you've got until it's gone. And being away from something like boxing, it's very... For me, it's a shit. I've got to be in the gym. My little boys are boxing now. My, my, my middle boy, Steve. My nephew's boxing. I mess around with them. I bring them on the pads. I take them. I do stuff in my gym with them. Like I, I put everything i got into them. Like I'm, I'm very... I'm very much in love with boxing, really. I didn't think... I used to think, do you know what? I'm going to retire when I'm 30. Oh, fuck it, on the edge, like, when I'm 30. But I was speaking to Naz yesterday, and he said, Billy Joe, he said, let me just tell you one thing. He said, when you get to an age of when you realise it's too late, he said, when you get to 36, 37, and you see these others at your age doing what, you know, they're doing, you look back and think, I would smash these... He said, and in your own head you can, but in your body you're too old. He said, then you'll realise what you had. Then you'll realise. He was done and finished at 27. Earned his cash, done what he'd done, 27 years old, retired, and completely changed boxing, put Frank Warren literally where he needed to be, put everybody on the map. Also, Frank Warren put him on the map. Good teamwork. And, you know, when you take, when someone like that says something to you, who's been there, who's done it, and probably got the biggest regret of his life. 27, not even bother Man, coming, like, what, not what even bother age, coming so out. Not, yeah. You know, like, I, I should imagine he's got big regrets. So I don't want to be one of them people, and I don't want to sit here and keep nagging on about it, but I will be back, and I know 100% there is nobody in the UK, there is nobody in the world to step and put a glove in front of me where I'm going to feel out of my comfort zone. So why not give it a go? Do you know what I mean? Why not get back in, get back down to shape? I love going away with the, all the gym boys, having a laugh, having the crack, getting in the you know, the sea, the swimming, the training, the dieting, even though I complain about it when I'm doing it. But I like it. Earlier on in this, um, in this podcast, you were talking about if you're not one to sit here and say if you've been depressed and all that kind of thing, but in boxing, how big of a thing is depression amongst boxers? I'm not specifically talking about you. You don't want to speak about that side of it. Cool, do you I think can... it's in boxing with boxers? Yeah, of course it is. It's not talked about. No, it's a not. Lot. It's not talked about. But it's it's talk... depression is in every sport because depression. Sport comes with very, very, very big expectations from fighters like myself and fighting, like who's representing our country at elite level. People like, you know, I'll use an example now, Conor Ben. At the moment, you don't, people don't realise what he's going through and what demons he's fighting, and people just jump into conclusions, and people just jump, well, let the facts come out, let people see real, truthful, paperwork, facts, black and white. Then have your opinion. He's probably going for a stage at the minute where he's, where he's, you know, he's right low on the floor. And I, I see him put a picture up earlier on. And the people, I looked at his comments and the amount of negative comments. And he's replying back to them. And he's replying back. So they, I know how he's feeling at the minute. He'd be feeling deep down in no man's land, when no one around him, he'd probably look for comfort, I don't know if his dad or his close loved ones, but apart from that, he'd be in a very bad place. So yes, it is in the sport of boxing, and it is in it in a big way. It's in the sport of football, it's in the sport of rugby. You know, so it comes in it, it comes in all aspects of life, but in sport, more so because 
you can't continue doing what we do all our life as a sportsman. You've got a certain window to do what you need to do. And if you don't do it in that window, you're losing out. Yeah, and you make a good point about Conor Ben. Obviously, whatever situation's going on, I think everyone's kind of like not looking to the fact of his... Yeah, of course. Like his welfare and just he's 26 years old like he's a relatively Listen, young man he's, going a, through he's his... a baby in the game <sighs> correct he's a baby in the game he's learning his craft but a lot of people Coogan in this life gets envy of people doing well never envy a man always wish for the best and, and, and happiness and every success in the world because you know that'll come back to you That'll come back to you in every single way, shape or form. Be good, clean, cleansing art. Do things that are goodwill and, and from your heart and you will be okay. So, you obviously fight for your family. I don't mean in the sense of a physical sense, but you fight for your family, your kids. Travellers, I suppose, as well. Uh, Coogan, I've got, I've got a very, very, very good following from the travelling community. English, Irish, Scotch and Welsh. I'm friends with all natives. In boxing, in, in travellers, a lot of people help each other. A lot of people's got good arts and big arts. And then a lot of people hasn't. But that's in every walk of life. You know, I've, I've done some, you know, some some not so good things in my life in, in, in boxing, you know, where I've been fined and punished and, 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 you know, dealt with correctly. I don't look back and think, oh, shit. I, I look back and think, do you know what? Look at it as a learning curve. You know, you you have to learn from every situation, and that's what I try and do now. Every situation, I try to learn from and and try to be the best person I can be. Like I say, I'm no saint, I'm no angel, I'm not no perfect person, but I try my best. The question too that was, you fight, like I said, you fight for community, your kids, etc., your family. Who actually fights for you? Who's actually there for you, regardless of what situation you're in? Because I know, I, I can't know the answer to this that you've got which you said earlier on, you've got good people around you, but who's there for you? To be fair, Coogan, like, when when you ask that question, do you mean in life generally? Yes. My kids. Yeah. My kids are there for me because, you know, I, I, I look at them and think, I can't... If I show them, if I show them me lurking around, sitting around when I am in that state, I can't give them the advice when they get old enough and they may go for it. You know, looking back now, I can go to my... Like, and I always look at this as an example. If I'm feeling shit, my kids might look at me, you know. I've got kids who's, you know, fairly good age now, so they know if things are good or bad. But when things are bad, they see me just motoring on and continue it. They're in their own head, they might think, well, nothing's wrong with him. Like, but I don't want to show them anything's wrong with me. I tell them I'm having a bad time. I, I talk to my kids, my oldest boys, and I'm talking to you. And I tell them about life and I tell them like, I'm feeling, not feeling too good, not this, not that. But how they see me act and carry on and present myself in times when it's been very difficult, I want them to look at that and think, do you know what, fucking going in the pub is not going to solve it fucking this ain't going to solve it my dad never stopped he was doing this doing that and sometimes I'll be absolutely busy doing absolutely fuck all yeah I'll just be doing absolutely fuck all sometimes I, do you know what I like doing like driving out on my own sitting there back just chilling sitting down nobody around me I'm where I live drive over the back that's my cool enough time I'll just sit there on your chill own. out on my own no one around me Look at me horses and just be in Billy Joe Saunders as well, which is a fucked up world sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but really? when, yeah, when I need to get away, like it's, it's nice. It's good. I like it. And, um, you know, a lot of people now come out with things. If that camera, oh, I've got depression. Oh, I've got this. I've got, yeah, of course you have. Yeah, but half the people you're telling are enjoying you telling this story and watching it and saying, well, yeah, I haven't got depression. He has. Oh, fuck me. Look, do you know what I'm saying? I like to be, if I've got depression, if I've got, any mental illnesses, whatever's wrong with me, I like to be very, very, very discreet about it. People will never know what sort of mood I'm in. You know? It's like if you win the lottery, isn't it? If you, if you were, or not you or me, but if you won the lottery, who's actually happy that you won the lottery apart from you and your family? No, no one. It's true, isn't it? They're not, are they? No. They're no thinking, one. why couldn't that be me? Yeah, why can't they give me some? Yeah, or give me some. 
Do you know what? I, <laughs> yes. I, had a, I had a family member, I'll tell you this, yeah. Not even, like, I don't really, I, yeah, I'd probably do, yeah. They went, oh, um, they needed an else. They wanted a, an, an else. Like, when I started doing okay, like, oh, yeah, we're going to, if, if we work, we've got jobs here, we've got to, like, we can pay you back, the house is, like, 170 on fair. I'm thinking, fuck off, mate. Like, if so, I kid you not, Coogan, I'm my right hand to God. If I know someone personally, like you now, and you went, Billy Joe, I need 500,000 for this operation. Of, I haven't got it, I need it. This operation going to save my life and my kid's life. I go, there you go, bam. I'll pay for it, done. Because you can't put money on people's lives. But when people think you're an idiot, because you're acting a certain way around them where you're not letting them in and you're not giving them too much as yourself, they start, people try to walk in. And once you start letting people walk in and treading over you and, you know, being in your life, and, and I call it getting comfortable around you. Once they start getting comfortable around you, then you're going to have little problems. And what people don't realise is small problems, all these little small problems can lead up to one big problem for yourself because they all creep up. People think and, you know, they get down in their self. I see a man the other day and he was 40 years old. Yeah, he looked about, and I kid you not, he looked about 90, 20. I, thought, I said, no way, you 40. No way. He went, I am. And he went to me, he was like, have you ever seen a, how do I put, how can I describe him? I can't, I don't even know how to describe this man, to be honest. He was very, he put me in the mind of like a child in a way, like he was very happy, like in his face, he was smiling, I could look in his eye and see so much happiness. And I went, he went, do you know, do you know how I keep looking like this? Nothing bothers me, he went. I don't have no problems in the world, I don't care about anything. He said to me, I don't care what problem it is, it could be the worst problem in the world. Once it goes through that ear and out that ear, and it's a problem, I don't let it stay in here. He went, it just gone. And I thought, fuck me, like, what a man. Like, I wonder what attributes I got, if I could, I would love to swap him for. Like, I'd probably give him my boxing skills. Here, take that and give me that. Because when you've got peace in life, you're a winner. When you've got natural peace, you're a winner. Have you got peace today? No. I don't have peace. To be honest, <laughs> my, my peace comes every once in a while. But look, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm not unhappy. I try to, you know, I've had, I look at the positives today. There's a couple of things happened earlier and must have been positives. So I take that and think, you know what? I'm going to feed the positive, not the negative. I've still got stuff in my head that I've got to sort out and do, and I know I've got to get done, and, you know, but if I look at all my problems, I'll be, that'd be, a, well, that'd be a stairway to heaven, or hell, one of the two. I don't know. Right, last one. What drives that fight within you? What is it that, what pushes you still now? What drives that fight? I don't mean in terms of a physical sense, I mean of a, more of a mental sense. What still drives it for you? The fear, the fear of letting my children down. The fear of ending up with, you know, the fear of just, like you see so many people now just fuck everything up in life. And I'm not talking about, you know, money when I say fuck everything. I'm talking about their personal problems, the way they deal with things, handle things. And I try not to be too hot on it now, hot-tempered on things. Like I'm very set back, I'll have relax. I'll assess, it, I'll assess the situation. But my kids, because if it wasn't for my sons, look, my little boy is having his first fight Saturday. And if I couldn't show him, look, he's lost over a stone in four weeks. And you know what? I'm so happy and proud of him because... Like I sat and had a conversation with him and said, look, son, he's very, very good and very, and he wants to box. And he couldn't understand why he had to, or he has to die and to get down to weight. So one day we went to a gym, sparring. He was 57 kilo. I put him in there with a 57 kilo boy and he was like four times as big as him and gave him a pasting, big pasting. I went to him, well, that's the reason why. And since that day, he's lost a stone. He's lost one stone. He's come down, and I thought to myself, like, so if he's doing it, while well, I'm young enough, I've got to do it alongside of him. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll be one of these dads, what, be in the gym with them, training with them, nightclub maybe with them, their first nightclub to watch over them. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll be one of them dads. Glasses on, Ray Bans on, Gucci up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dulce, D and G up. Behind them. It's one of them, Cook. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, 
I said I've been interviewing you for what, 13 years? And all our interviews have pretty much been the same over that 13 years. So this is the point of me doing this with you as well. Because you're talking about things that... Mo most of the stuff I can kind of gather with you because I know you. But a lot of things you ain't spoken about because you're not that kind of person to... Yeah. To even talk about this stuff off camera, let alone on camera. So I do appreciate you doing this. But if I can ever talk to somebody... and Because I get messages all the time on Instagram, a lot. Like, people, I'm going to commit suicide and then... I owe four hundred pound. Can you pay? <laughs> like, I get all their messages, but the people when I look at it and think, do you know what? There was one certain message. Uh, Daniel Faze, his name wasn't he? He, he was down here. We message him like no one. The messages you don't. You probably don't even read them. But sometimes you just click on the little messages. What is unread? What what people sent you? Message requests. Requests. And I looked at one, and this fella was having a bad time, and I could just tell he was having a bad time. But looking what he was putting up, I didn't know him what he was putting up and how he was messaging me. And I said, look, in life, you're always going to feel the worst. But sometimes, at your, at your worst, you have to look your best. At your lowest, you have to look your best if you want to get out there and, 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 and brush this off. And exchanging a few messages, and after about three or four weeks, I seen him put something up, new job he started. And then like, I followed him, and then I was watching him, and he got himself a new car. And then he got his own place. Like, in the space of, like, 18 months. But I thought, do you know what? Fair play. You've won the lottery. Because you're talking about killing yourself. Now, look, you've got your own place. You've got your own car. You got. Do you know what I'm saying? And I said to him, story. I said, you know what? Yeah. Whenever you want to come to any top boxing fight, you let me know. And I got him tickets for Tyson Fury fight ringside. Him and his new partner he met, or whatever it was. But looking back on him, he wasn't someone what was just sending these for attention. You could see this person had... He had it. He, he he were down. I could tell he were down, and I will say one thing. Very very like. And when I, I took something from that, because I thought how low he was, and look what he done within the space of eighteen months. How he turned himself back around. So it can be done. Anything can be done. Nothing's impossible. People can do it. If, and if I said, I'm not saying what I said to him helped like made it better, but what advice I give him, if that was a one percent bit of help for him in that full situation that he was in, then I'm a very happy man. Because, you know, if someone really like messaging me, not these idiots who just text you for a chat and a load of shit, personal problems, if I can help, I will. Hmm. Just the last thing I'll say on that, I know you've done some fucking stupid things. Very. In your life, outside of the ring, obviously. Um, but I know loads of stuff that you've done that people don't know, like things that you've given people and money that you've given f situations and whatever else. I know them things, and I know that you don't do it for people to go, oh, we're well, Billy Joe. No, yeah, a lot, I don't. a lot of this stuff, I, I hear it kind of not even from you, I hear it from, oh, Billy Joe did this the other day, blah, blah, but I know it's being done where it's like you've done it and that's the end of it rather than put, blasting it all over social media. Coogan, that, that's not, that's that way of of putting myself across for help. If one of my there's friends what's come to me, and I mean friends what's been blood friends since I've been very very young, with problems and help, in in what I would never talk about. Even a stranger, I'm never gonna sit and talk about it because people come for help. That help and a pat on the back. You know when I see these people going up and putting things on Instagram and oh yeah you go do this, like. Don't do it, because it may make you feel better, but it doesn't make them people feel better. Who you're doing that for? No, they'll feel embarrassed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You don't, you don't do things like that. And I'm not talking about giving. I'm talking about even helping them. Mm. Like, you know, some people might say, "Oh, yeah, I had a conversation with E out me." Yeah, but it's nice. All right, if they want to recognise that, great, fantastic. But it's about having a clean art and doing it because you want to do it. Mm. I, I like, I'll do it for you. No problem. I sort that. That's not. That's done. Finish. Forget about it. Is that your worry? Done. Finish. Forget about that. Yeah. Done. Like that. If I can do that, and I wish I could do it for everybody, you know, I'd do it. But some people, there's good and bad. Listen, like I said, Coogan, I'm not going to sit and say I'm an angel, but I'm not a bad person, you know. And uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people's got respect for me, and a lot of people look at me as I don't know, the Joker or something like that. But in my own head, I know what I am, and I know how real I am in my own heart. 
Okay, well, Billy, Joe, Saunders, again, thank you very much for coming on Raw, the Fight Within podcast. Thanks for coming in my uh, in my caravan. I think it's very you? fitting we've done it in a caravan because a lot of our interviews, early interviews, were done, not in this one. In another caravan. Or different caravans. Different caravans, yeah. You've had a few. I've had a few. I've uh, got the, the new alley wheels on this one, though. That's it. The new rims. What is it? The, the, go, the 32. The stripes, the go faster stripes. The 32, cousy. Yes, they've got, bro. They've got the 32s on. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we'll see you next Monday. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next week. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light. Yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see, if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here, and this has been like a therapy session.